الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله حضرت علامہ ابو عبد اللہ محمد بن احمد مالکی قرطبی علیہ رحمۃ اللہ القوی ہیز نریٹڈ اے وومن ونس وزٹڈ دا بلیسڈ کوٹ آف حضرت سیدنا حسن بصری علیہ رحمۃ اللہ القوی اینڈ ریکویسٹڈ مائی یونگ ڈاٹر ہیز پاسٹ اوے پلیز لیٹ می نو ہاؤ آئی کین سی ہر ان مائی ڈریم اللہ اکبر My young daughter has passed on. Please let me know what can I do in order for me to see her in my dream. He told her. Who? Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Basir Rahmatullahi Al-Qawis told her what to do. So she saw her deceased daughter in her dream. However, in the state that she was dressed in the clothing made from the hellfire. Allahu Akbar. She had chains around her neck and her feet were bound together. Upon seeing this horrifying scene, the mother began to tremble. She started to tremble. The next day she related the dream to Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Basri, alayhi rahmatullahi al-qawi, who was saddened upon hearing it. After some time, Hazrat Sayyidina Hassan Basri alayhi rahmatullahi al-qawi saw a girl in his dream who was sitting on a throne with a crown on her head. Allahu Akbar. Upon seeing him, she said, I am the daughter of the woman who told you of my state. Sayyidina Hassan Basri alayhi rahmatullahi al-qawi then said, According to her, you were being punished by Allah Azza wa Jal. How did this transformation take place? Allahu Akbar. The deceased girl replied, A person passed by the graveyard and recited salat upon the beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And due to the barakah and blessings and virtues of salat ala nabi, the torment and punishment from 560 graves was lifted. Subhanallah, subhanallah. اللہ اکبر صلو علی الحبیب صلی اللہ تعالی علی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم صلاۃ و سلام علیک یا سیدی یا رسول اللہ وسلم علیک یا سیدی یا نبی اللہ دی او ویوز آف مدنی چینل ہیو وی لرن دیٹ بائی دا ورچوز اینڈ بلیسنگز اینڈ بارکا فرام درود فائیو ہنڈریڈ اینڈ سکسٹی گریوز فرام امنگس from above 560 graves punishment was lifted just because of the virtues and barakah and blessings of durood upon our beloved nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam to chaliye ye shair hamare saath milke padhte hain basuwe ko ve madina badho durood padho بسوئے کوئے مدینہ بڑھو درود پڑھو بسوئے کوئے مدینہ بڑھو درود پڑھو جو تم کو چاہیے جنت پڑھو درود پڑھو جو تم کو چاہی 
لیے جنات پڑھو درود پڑھو بسوئے کوئے مدینہ بڑھو درود پڑھو سبحان اللہ what a beautiful translation advance towards مدینہ المنورہ and recite the rood upon our noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if you desire jannat then recite the rood upon our noble messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salatan wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi ya nabi allah dear viewers of madani channel once again we would like to welcome you to this beautiful episodes on Madani channel regarding the laws of Salah, subhanallah. Today we are going to continue with the discussion regarding the seven faraid of Salah, subhanallah. We have discussed takbir e tahrima Qiyam, Qirat, Ruku, Sujood. Today we are going to learn about Qaida Akhira and Khuruj bi Sunni'ihi, subhanallah. Therefore, before we hear anything, inshallah, I request you, as this is the tariqah of da'awat islami that before we hear anything good, we make good, good intention. So, inshallah, I make good intention that for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal and His beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I'm going to teach ilm deen inshallah. We are going to learn ilm deen and you make good intentions that from beginning to end you will watch this episode. And whatever good you hear in this, inshallah, you will pass it on to others. As our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa had said, Balligu anni walaw aya. Convey on my behalf, even if it is one verse. Subhanallah. So, the sixth fard from amongst the seven faraid of salah is qadai akhira. Qadai Akhira is that after the completion of all rakat of salah, after you completed all your rakat of salah, it is fard to sit in qada. It is fard to sit in qada for the amount of time in which complete tashahud, meaning at-tahiyyat attu wa rasuluhu is recited. Subhanallah. If the musalli offering a four rakat Far Salah did not perform Qada after the fourth rakat and has not yet performed the sajda for the fifth rakat, he has to sit down. However, if he has performed the sajda for the fifth rakat, or in case of Fajr, for example, did not sit after two rakat and did the sajda for the third rakat, or in case of Maghrib, did not sit after the third rakat and did the sajda for the fourth rakat, the fard salah will become invalid in all these cases. Allahu Akbar. In these cases, he should add one more rakat except maghrib salah. However, what is qada akhira? Qada akhira is that one should sit in tashahud position, in attahiyat position, after all his rakats are completed. This is Fard. This position, the sitting is fard and it is from amongst the seven faraid of salah. Subhanallah. And finally, the seventh fard is khuruj bi sunnihi. Khuruj bi sunnihi is that after qada akhira, deliberately saying salam, talking or any other such act that finishes the salah. This is called khuruj bi sunni'ihi, to come out of salah. However, if any other deliberate act except salam was found, if any other deliberate act was found besides salam, repeating such a salah will be wajib. It will be wajib. And if any such act was found without intention, the salah will become invalid. Allahu Akbar. So khuruj bi sunni'ihi means that one should terminate and complete his salah by making salam, by 
making salam and salah. However, today, dear viewers of Madani channel, we have completed the seven faraid of salah, which is takbir at tahrima, qiyam, qiraat, ruku, sujood, qada akhira, khuruj bi sunnihi. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us practice what we have learned. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us so that we may perform our salah correctly as we have heard many many other hadith. However, dear, dear viewers of Madani channel, the whole idea and the theme or if one desires, why isn't my salah done correctly? Besides learning and we have spoke and we have discussed this, how important it is for us to learn proper recitation of the Holy Quran. How important it is for us to go to the madaris. We should attend the Madrasatul Madina Barai Baligan classes conducted by Dawud Islami in numerous masajid, in numerous areas globally, Alhamdulillahi Azza wa Jal. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these classes are conducted. So do not feel shy. Do not feel out of place that why must I go and learn at this age? No, you need to take out time as we discussed that zamana e koshish in the period and time in which you are going to practice and learn will be counted. Allahu Akbar. And if you still commit mistakes, if you still do make mistakes during this zamana e koshish that while you are practicing, then you will not be sinful. You will not be accountable for that. In order to not be accountable, we need to learn, we need to take out the time from your job, from your working, from your home. Free yourself one hour or two hours a day, dear viewers of Madani channel. Surely, inshallah, wherever you are, if you practice upon this, inshallah, your salah will be performed correctly. And there are many other Madani pools, as we also discussed in the previous episodes, that why do we feel lazy in salah? We spoke on the issue regarding the importance of salah, the blessings of salah, the blessings and mercy and barakah of namaz, Allahu Akbar. It all boils down to this point that our wudu is not done correctly. Our wudu is not done correctly. Agar hum wudu aur ablution is tarah karte hain ki na chehra ka tikana hai, na haato ka tikana hai, hum paani kis tarah baha rahe hain. We just pour water over them. Heedlessly, we wash our faces, we're not kid, whether those parts of the body are washed in which it is fard for those parts to be washed correctly. We don't take precaution, we don't take any interest. And if our wudu is done weakly, if our wudu is weak, if our ablution is weak, our salah will automatically be weak. It will be easy for shaitan to attack our salah. It will be easy for shaitan to put waswasa in our namaz. Therefore, dear viewers of Madani channel, do not forget, there are many blessings of wudu. There are many, numerous blessings and virtues about ablution. Listen to this narration. That Hazrat Allama Abdul Wahhab Rahmatullahi Ta'ala says that once Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Azam Abu Hanifa was in the area of the Jamia Masjid in Kufa, where he saw a young man performing wudu. Who? Hazrat Imam Azab Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu was in an area in Kufa in the Jamia Masjid. Where he saw a young man performing wudu and drops of used water from wudu were trinkling from his body. The Imam radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, Son, repent. Repent in the court of Allah azza wa jal. Repent of disobeying your parents. The young man instantly replied, I repent. The Imam radiallahu anhu then saw drop, drops of water dripping from the body of another man and said, O oh brother, repent from fornication. Repent from fornication. The man replied, I repent. I make toba in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then the Imam radiallahu ta'ala anhu then saw drops of water dripping from the body of a third person and said, O 
repent of taking wine, drinking wine and listening to music? He replied, I repent. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Sayyiduna Imam Azam Abu Hanifa radiallahu ta'ala anhu had been given the power of kashf, spiritual insight and was able to see the faults of people. He prayed to Allah Azza wa Jal to take back this from him. Allah Azza wa Jal answered his prayer and henceforth he could no longer see the sins of people being washed away during wudu. Allahu Akbar. Wudu is a special, special blessing. Wudu and performing ablution is a special mercy. It is for us to always stay in wudu. Let's listen to another narration. According to a summary of two sayings of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the person who begins wudu by saying Bismillah, the person who begins his wudu, jo wudu ke shuru mein Bismillah padhta hai, his whole body from head to toe gets purified. Subhanallah. And the one who does not say Bismillah before wudu, only washed portion of his body gets purified. Allahu Akbar. Any jin hisso ko wo dhoya hai. Only those body parts that he have washed, if he goggled his mouth, rinsed his nose, washed his face, his hands, including his elbows, made masa of his head, and washed his feet, only those body parts, gunas committed by those body parts will be purified. Whereas if he had to read Bismillah before, before making wudu, before performing ablution, Subhanallah, Hamari Pyare Aqa, Taje Dari Madina, the Prophet of Mankind, the peace of our heart and mind, the most generous and kind Sallallahu Ta'ala Wasallam said, the one who recites Bismillah before performing wudu, from head to toe, all the sins committed from him, by him, will be washed due to the virtues and blessings of wudu, subhanallah. Sallu ala al-habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Salatan wa salaman alayka ya sayyidi ya rasulullah, wa sallam alayka ya sayyidi ya nabi Allah. Dear viewers of Madani channel, subhanallah. How great are the sayings of our beloved nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are so many blessings, there are so many virtues. Do we not intend that our sins should be removed? It is extremely good that we should always remain in the condition of wudu. Let's listen to the excellence of sleeping in the state of wudu. Jo shakhs wudu ki halat mein sota hai. Wudu ki halat mein sota hai. The person that sleeps in the state of wudu. A hadith states, the person who sleeps in the state of wudu is similar to the one who worships in the state of fasting. Subhanallah, subhanallah. How great is this? Ki that man that is fasting, that person who is in the state of rova, he is fasting and he is making ibadat. Allahu Akbar. The sawab and the reward that he will attain and gain is the same reward that man will achieve and gain if he performs wuzu and sleep. Subhanallah. And he neend mein hai, so raha hai. Magar sawab kama raha hai. Sirf is wajah se ki wudu karke so raha hai. He is performing wudu. He performed his wudu and then he slept. Subhanallah. So shouldn't this become a habit for us dear viewers of Madani channel that before we sleep we should also perform wudu. Subhanallah. So that we have this habit of remaining in wudu. Or namaz se pehle hum wudu jo karenge to achche se karenge. We will follow the mustahabbat of wudu. The conditions of wudu. Those sunan of wudu. The tariqah, the proper way of wudu, where we should not be wasting water. Inshallah, in the coming episodes, we will discuss how we should perform wudu without wasting water. Inshallah. Let us listen to the one who dies in the state of wudu is a shaheed. Subhanallah. Yes, there is a narration that the one who dies in the state of wudu is a shaheed. The beloved and blessed Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said to Hazrat Sayyiduna Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, son, if you have the capability of remaining in the state of wudu all the time, Hamari Pyare Aqa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nasihat farma rahe hain. To who? Hazrat Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu by saying, O son, if you have the capability of remaining in the state of wudu all the time, then do so. Then do so. Because shahadat 
is written down for the one whose soul is captured by the angel of death in the state of wudu. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. What a beautiful thing, dear viewers of Madani Channel. When Malak al Mawta alayhi salam will extract the ruh and the soul from that person's body who is in a state of wudu, Allahu Akbar, the angel of death will write down that he is a shaheed. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Ala Hazrat Imam Ahmad Raza Khan alayhi rahmatur rahman says, keeping wudu all the time is mustahab. It is a good deed. If one does it, he is rewarded. And if one does not do it, if one doesn't do it, koi guna to nahi hai. There is no sin in doing so. But it is mustahab to do so. Allahu Akbar. Therefore, dear viewers of Madani channel, let us try and benefit. Let us try and benefit from these Madani pools. Subhanallah. Let's now listen to a tip to avoid troubles. A tip. I am giving you a tip to avoid troubles. Subhanallah. Allah Azza wa Jal says to Hadrat Sayyiduna Musa, Ala Nabiyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam, O Musa, alayhi salam, you should take yourself to task if you face a trouble when not in state of wudu. Allahu Akbar. Listen very attentively. You should take yourself to task if you face a trouble when not in the state of wudu. Remaining in the state of wudu all the time is a sunnah of Islam. Subhanallah. Dear viewers of Madani channel, once again we have heard a narration. How beautiful it is to stay in the state of wudu. How beautiful and how many blessings and barakah there is to stay in the condition and in the state of wudu. Now let's learn seven benefits of keeping wudu. Saat benefits. Seven benefits of keeping wudu. Imam Ahl Sunnat, Imam Ahmad Raza Khan, Alihi Rahmatul Rahman says, Some saints, Rahimahumullah Ta'ala, have said that anyone who stays in the state of wudu at all times may be awarded with seven bounties by Allah Azza wa Jal. How many? Seven bounties by Allah Azza wa Jal. Number one, angels will be enthusiastic to avail his company. Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yani, farishte bhi yehi chahenge. Even the angel will want to stay in his company. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. The holy pen will keep on writing good deeds for him. Allahu Akbar. The holy pen will keep writing good deeds for him as long as he is in a state of wudu. Allahu Akbar. His organs will perform tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. Those parts that he had washed during wudu will make the tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. Subhanallah. He will never miss his takbir tahrima. Meaning, first takbir of salah. If he is in a state of wudu, he will never miss his takbir tahrima. Subhanallah. When he sleeps, Allah Azza wa Jal sends angels who will protect him from the evils of jinns and human beings. Subhanallah. Yani jab wo soega, neend ki halat mein bhi ho, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala farishto ko bhejega ki iski hifazat karo. Un jinnon se jo napaak, Allahu Akbar, aur wo insan jo isko nuqsan pohcha sakte hain. Allahu Akbar. In other words, he is protected from evils, from the evils of jinns. Or from the evil jinns and human beings. The sixth is that he will feel easiness in severe fits of death. Yani jab sakarat ke halat mein ho, when he is in the condition of sakarat, jaakani ke alam mein ho, because of the barakah of wuzu, inshallah, even that state will become easy for him. And lastly, the seventh benefit is this, that he will remain in the safeguard of Allah Azza wa Jal as long as he is in the state of wudu. Hamesha, he will be in the protection of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Ta'ala ki hifazat mein rahega. He will be in the protection of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as long as he is in the state of wudu. Subhanallah, dear views of Madani channel, let's make good intention. Ke aaj ke baad se inshallah, hatta al imkan, till wherever we can, we will make koshish and we will try to be in the state of wudu. For there are many, many benefits, many, many blessings, many many virtues of being in the state of wudu inshallah 
I ask you and request you to once again keep watching Madani channel. Inshallah, catch us on the coming episodes regarding the laws of Salah. Do not forget what is our Madani mission. And it is this that I must strive to reform myself and the people of the entire world. Inshallah, Azza wa Jal, Sallu ala al-Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Oh brothers, namaz will help you namaz will to see Allah. Oh brothers, namaz will help you namaz will to attain Jannah.